Here we have the simulation that you were working with in lab. So set it to continuous. Uh, we'll crank up electron production a little bit here. Uh, so this setup is similar to our classical discussion of the photoelectric effect. Uh, here this is a resistor that's getting hot and heating up the cathode, making the cathode hot enough that electrons are getting ejected. Uh, once they are ejected in this gap here, they feel a certain voltage that accelerates them towards the anode. Uh, for a photoelectric effect, we try to have nothing in the gap here, just empty space. Uh, in this case, we have one atom. So that's our setup. Uh, if we would look over on the right-hand side here, we have an energy level diagram. So let me pause this for a moment. So we see a number of these short black lines. Those are denoting the individual energy levels. The vertical axis here is energy, so the spacing of these lines tells us that the energy levels in our atom, in this case hydrogen, uh, are not evenly spaced. They get closer together as you go up in energy. We have a little gray dot here representing the one electron that exists inside a hydrogen atom. And then there is this arrow here indicating the energy at collision. So this is the energy that one of these fired electrons has when it reaches the atom. So we'll unpause this. So we can see that the electron inside the atom keeps jumping up to the second energy level and then jumping back down. Uh, let's change this to slow motion and try to watch what happens here. When does the photon get released and how does that correspond to what's happening in this diagram? Try to understand in the energy level diagram what happens when a photon gets released. Okay, we'll turn it back up here. I can lower the voltage and decrease the energy at collision. These electrons are being accelerated less through the gap. And notice now nothing happens. The electrons travel straight through the atom. Nothing is happening on the energy level diagram here. And we want to be able to understand that in terms of where these black lines are compared to the energy at collision. Let's crank that energy back up. So one thing that's very important to notice here, here's the energy of our second energy level. Here's the energy at the collision, and they are not the same. I don't need to fine tune the energy at collision to exactly line up with the energy level here. And that's very different from exciting an atom with a photon. When you shoot a photon at an atom, that photon either passes through or gets entirely absorbed. If the photon gets absorbed, then all of the photon's energy has to go to the atom, and the atom has to be able to receive exactly that amount of energy. For an electron, an electron comes in, collides with the atom, and then the electron still exists. It just bounces off the atom and comes out a moment later. And so for the electron that collides with the atom, it comes in with a bunch of energy, it collides, it can transfer some of that energy to the atom, but then the original electron still exists and can still carry on some of its energy as kinetic energy. That's very different and an important difference from a photon, which gets absorbed and has to transfer all of its energy or none at all. Turn up this voltage a little higher still. And now we can see two different types of photons being released. We have a lot of these purple photons, but also some orangish red photons. And again, try to get a feel for the different photons being released and what we see happening in this energy level diagram here. When we excite the atom up to the, eight, the third energy level here, does it always jump all the way down to the ground state? Does it always jump to the second level and then to the ground state? Are there multiple options available? Uh, looks like a moment ago there we saw an, uh, the atom get excited 
and then hit with a second electron to get even more excited. Uh, so that's certainly possible, but not as likely as some other outcomes. Obviously, that depends on how quickly we're firing electrons, how frequently we are firing electrons at the atom. Uh, anything else we want to point out? Uh, I think those are all the important ideas that I want to draw your attention to. So go ahead, play around with it a little bit more, uh, but you should have a feel for what you're focusing on in this simulation now.